Hey everyone, Tim Higgins here. So we're looking at a different scenario with using TDM, service virtualization, and then doing our testing with the blaze meter. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna pull up our handy dandy notebook. We have a med site, our med site has an API. Our API layer, and I'll show you this in a few seconds, does pull its data from a SQL database. Okay, we're gonna look at that. Now in SQL database, we're going to generate synthetic data uh, for our application, but then we're gonna put on a service virtualization to virtualize our endpoint here. And the good point of that is if you wanted to, like if you were testing or doing against an API that's either charging you for funds, if you use it like a bank, for an example, or let's say the API is down or just isn't complete yet. Um, so service virtualization is great for that. Of course, synthetic data, there's millions of reasons why you create synthetic data. One of the best reasons is if you need test data or if I need data for building functionality, um, that's great for that. And then of course, we're gonna finish it off by adding a great testing with our Blaze Meter application. So let's kind of look at this. Let's go ahead and close. Oh, and I do have videos on all these, so service virtualization and TDM. So I'm not gonna get in details on how to do those in this video. Um, we're just gonna kind of do the high level and you'll see from there, okay? So here's our med site, all right? So our med site is running. If I click on claims, go to claims list, I'll see there's no claims there. Uh, we'll go down to adjuster, there's no adjusters, and of course there's no uh, clearment information. Now, as testers or as um, developers who are building functionality, obviously we need this data, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to TDM, and we're gonna, in TDM, I have my generators that I created earlier. They really just have these three tables, okay? We have adjuster, um, adjuster, sorry, not adjuster, uh, a clearment. I, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but I'm close enough. I'm not into, uh, you know, this is insurance. But then if I look in the database, I have these three tables here, okay? Um, and they're definitely empty because I just emptied them out before I did this demo. So now that they're in there, I did the data painter. I was able to link these tables together, as you'll see. So it keeps that relationship. Again, I'm not going to get details on this video um, because I have a lot of the videos out there for that. Let's go ahead and publish this data. And I'm going to publish it to the database. And I'm going to keep this one simple, okay? Because I'm going to try something later on that I probably shouldn't try because I didn't try it before the video to see if it actually looks cool or not. But we're going to try it anyway. So we're going to keep it small. We're going to say 15, just give it a visual. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and publish this. Now, realistically, I can schedule it. I can publish it to a file. There's millions of things I can do with that. And again, I have other videos that kind of walk you through how to do data generation, how to use the data painter in details. That's how you create the little language thing, as we call it. Um, and then, of course, how you publish. So all that is in other videos. So I'm not going to spend time doing that here. The only thing I want to do here is just show you the data is just being created. Now that it's running, we can go look. And this is, let's refresh this data. Okay, it's in there, but there's only eight, so it's still running. And I didn't clear this out before I had this call, I should have. So there's 12 here. And then here, um, there's all 15 there. So it's it's in the process of doing, it shouldn't take too much longer. Um, sometimes this page takes a little bit to refresh, so every now and then I just like to refresh. Now it's complete. So if I go look in my database now, I expect 15, I've got 15 there. And I should have 15 here in my claims. I do have 15 there. And then I have 15, just don't run that. And I have 15 here. Now, perfect. Now I'm looking in this corner if you know what I'm looking at. The coolest thing is too is I still have relationships. So if I look at this name, it should match what's in my claims, which is there. And the adjuster, which is here, should match this one. And it does. So we do contain that relationship. But... We're not here to talk about data. We're here to talk about our website. So now if I go down and click on claims, just like that, I now have all 15 records, realistic synthetic data, okay? That's very important. Should have put a space in there, but I apologize about that. But anyway, um, in the so if we look here, and again, the whole concept is you're trying not to use PII data. So these are synthetic users, right? And if I go to, I think it's this one. Yeah, this one actually has social security numbers, right? Date of births, that type stuff. So we have the 15 records in here of each one of those. So that's really cool. But I know the question is, Tim, what else can you do for us? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log on to the server and I'm gonna minimize all this. This is our web config file. As you can see in the web config, we're pointing to port 300. So if I go over here and look, 
Um, do I have port 300 open? No, I do not. So let's, oops, let's grab this and we'll put it right here and we'll just say port 300. And I'm only looking at the claims, right? So, and there's my 15 records, right? That's proving that this is my API layer right here that this website portal, if you will, is actually calling to get its data, okay? And it's actually this one here. So if I go back to claims, this is the data you're looking at here, okay? Now, if I go to, is that right? Yeah, it should be right. So now let's go in here and let's do something. So of course this times out. Now I have a virtual endpoint that is running. You can see it here. That virtual endpoint is actually this one. So if I refresh it, here's the fun part about this one. This one actually has a hundred rows of data in it. So if I, oops, I did not mean to do that. I was trying to copy it. And if we go to beautify JSON, you'll probably see my work from earlier, but if I go in here and hit delete and I hit paste and we beautify this, this is now the records that my serverless, my service, I'm sorry, virtualization sees. So that's pretty cool because it's not only seeing different data. So if I grab this one, I wouldn't expect to find this one in here. I mean, see, perfect. So this would be my production data. This is my virtual endpoint. It's my virtual API. And it actually has more, which is really cool. And the reason I say this is because think about a developer who says, hey, it's kind of cool, but can I get a hundred you know, users, can I get a thousand users? It doesn't have to be the same or less of what your actual data is. Because again, here we only have 15. Now, I know, Tim, put your money where your mouth is. So this is endpoint, let's grab it. This cool one right here. We're gonna go to here and I'm gonna change my config file to point to my virtual API, okay? Uh, actually, I probably should put that there so I know what the original one is. And what we're going to do is we're going to save this. Okay. And now I'm pointing to my virtual API. This count uh, should have accounts three. I should be able to reset that count. So let's say reset count. Okay. Now it's at zero. But if I go over here to my portal, sorry, we're going to come to the comments. Oh, where's my, here it is. If I come here to the portal and if we go here, now, let's see how many claims we have. Do we have 15 or do we have 100? Now, of course, this is going to take a little bit longer um, just because I had more data to pull back. And now it's pulling back 100 claims. Most importantly, this is hitting the virtual API, not the original API. Now, the truth is what I did earlier, if you want to know the magic behind the scenes, is I had 100, I generated 100 roles in my database then I did my recording, which saved it at that state, okay? Um, and then I deleted the data. Obviously, you can't do this in production. Then I deleted that data to regenerate only the 15. So that's how we have a total of 100 because it was there before, okay? So, and I'm just showing you the magic. They're all the same. Well, not the same data, but they all have 100 in them because we're hitting a virtual back end. Now, again, Tim, prove it. So let's prove it. What happens if I stop this? Okay, let's go ahead and stop my virtual service. Oh, notice it has three because I hit it three times. Now it's offline. And if I hit refresh, I probably don't even have to hit refresh because it's JavaScript, but still, let's go ahead and claims. Now there's no data here, okay? In a few minutes, you'll see an error message where it's trying to load the grid. The grid will prop up empty uh, because there's no data. And again, this is just a fake website that I created, so I don't care about the error message. If I click on adjuster info, there's no data, right? And if I go down here to here, there's no data. Why is there no data? Because I stopped the endpoint, okay? So let's go ahead and start it back. Okay, it's running. Now if I hit refresh, it may take a few seconds to get the data. There we go, came right back. So if I go back to claims, again, give it a few seconds, there we go. Claims is up and let's go ahead and test our adjuster and that's up beautiful so the concept there is what we did so let's recap and then we'll step on to the next step we with tdm we generated some data 
um, we generated 15 records. Okay, uh, we looked at the portal, and then we started our SV and pointed our portal to the SV API, which has a hundred records. Kind of cool, huh? So now what else can we do with it? So let's do this. Let's say I need to do a load test. Let's get rid of some of this for real estate. Let's say if I need a load test on my functionality. Well, that's great. So what I can do with that is let's pull up blaze meter and we're going to start a new test. Now I created a J meter script earlier. I also have videos on how to do that, but they're right here. So let's go ahead and also have videos on how to create these testing, but we're going to start with a performance test. We're going to say create and we're going to say create a performance test. And it's going to ask me for my scripts. Sometimes this works, just a Chrome thing. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay, it worked that time. Um, sometimes when you drag it over, it wants you to view it, right, versus uploading it. But this time it actually uploaded it. Okay. So now here's my JMeter. Here's my YAML script. We're going to put both of those in there together. Um, and what we're going to say is, what if I want um, total users, let's go with maybe 45. Let's just keep it simple. I want my wrap-up time to be 35. Uh, or my duration, I'm going to run for 35 minutes before it hits the max, okay? And then the ramp up, I'm um, just keep it kind of low, I guess. So what's going to happen with this is we got, oh, I said it backwards. I apologize. It's going to run for 35 minutes for 45 users, and we're going to take 25 to go from zero to 25 uh, users, and then it's going to run steady for about, you know, what, 10 more users or whatever. And then I'm also going to do steps because I like steps because this is going to gradually add our users, okay? And again, I have videos out for that. Sorry, I'm talking too quick and losing my train of thought of what I'm supposed to be doing anyway. Uh, but what we're going to do is rename this to SV test. I'll call it performance test, okay? Now, the other cool thing too is I can also add other um, again I have videos on there but we can add other locations if we wanted to and we have many many different locations which you can choose from and you can add as many as you want within reason right so if I want to add another one I'll just click it and we'll just say that one's come from Oregon and that's 50 50 um, I want 50 users come from there but I can also say you know I want 75 coming from here and I want 25 coming from here okay um, but at this point I don't really care we're just gonna stick with 100 from here okay um, and there's other things I can do if we look down to the end user so we could say I'll take this and we'll use our selenium script and then let's go ahead and let's just kick this off now I'm gonna kick it off I'm gonna start the other tests and come back to it but the truth is at this point um, it's gonna take 45 minutes to run right so I'm not gonna keep the video blank for 45 minutes let's let it the test actually start and then what we're going to do is we're going to play a couple of things. So if I do API monitoring, you would never do this for an example. Um, well, let me back that up. I never could find of a use case where you'd want to do this. But if you actually wanted to, then you could actually create, let's go ahead and create a, a new test. And we'll call it uh, med site. I can't type. API, okay, and we'll say okay. Um, you you probably would never actually want to test your APIs per se that are virtual, but if you wanted to, of course you could. I guess a good way to do that is extra notice of when the website is down. So we can just put that in there, hit save and run. We could add the other ones because this is only claims, but this is just for a demo. So we're going to save and run. This one's going to start running and we'll come back to it later. So functionality, we could also do a functionality test, functional, create test, and we can test our UI. And what we we'll do is get out of script mode here. Now that's fine. Now we have this big blue button that says upload. We can click on it and we can go to, I think it's on my desktop. And I have a folder called JMeter scripts. 
and this is gonna create our functional test for us. But keep in mind, our functional test is actually running on our backend, which is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and rename this. Um, we'll just rename it as MedSite SV um, UI test. How's that? Okay, and we'll just say go. Now, I'm not going to keep these videos, right? So I'll go ahead and pause it and I'll come back and give you the results afterwards. So uh, there's no point in letting it run for 45 minutes. Oh, sorry, I need to double click to get that one going. All right, so thank you and I'll be back shortly. Hey everyone, so I thought I'd come back in here even though our performance test is still running, let's go ahead and click on it because we've got enough information here where we can actually see where it's going. It's only been running for 10 minutes. Like I said, I've set it for 45 minutes, but that's fine because I don't expect any boo-boos or any gotchas. The point is we've got a ramp up of our users, which is really nice. I'm not going to go in details on this because I do have videos out there, out there of how to understand all this. If I look at my timeline report, it's pulling back uh, my metrics, which is really cool. And I can scroll down and add more metrics if I wanted to, response codes, that kind of stuff. I even have videos on how you can interact with other products as well to get more information. Uh, user experience, it's slowly coming up, which is really cool. If I click on it, I can actually see the images of the steps that I took. So if I click on one of these, whoops, sorry. If I click on one of these, you can see it actually coming up, which is really cool. Okay. Um, I like the little robot. Never noticed that before. But anyway, um, so, uh, but this shows me every step that I took. Now, keep in mind, this was the J meter that was doing this, uh, that we created. It wasn't me physically during the test. Okay. Uh, but again, I can click on one of these. And the other thing too, is this gives you so much information. This is kind of like what I call the stack trace down here, but it gives me so much details that I could get just from these snapshots. Okay. Uh, which is really cool. So here again, we can kind of just mirror our scope if we want to. Um, the health engine is about the testing machine. Uh, do I have any errors? Again, this is just a bogus website I put together, so I don't expect too many errors. Um, and then the regional configuration. I have two scenarios because we have our JMeter script and we also have our Selenium script um, that's uploaded. So it's for UI and for our load testing. And again, I have videos on how to do all that. So no details there. But if I go over here and also look at my function test, my functional test, I can see that this one passed. I can click on this one and I can actually see a video of what happened, okay, what it actually tested, which is really, really cool. And over here, it tells me the steps. Um, I can look at this in a waterfall. I can see the logs and I can see how everything turned out for this test. Now, keep in mind, you're saying, well, Tim, what makes this test special? Well, this test was using, let's go back to our handy dandy notebook. Uh, this test was using an, a portal that was calling an API, right? That was that was created by a service virtualization, so it wasn't a real API. And that API was, had a TDM that generated a hundred um, records, right? So a hundred bits of data. Uh, that's invalid, but a hundred columns in each table, and blah 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 blah. So it's really cool. So the concept is what we can do with this is imagining your application is using maybe uh, a third party API that you want to test the functionality of the website, but you can't do it truly because of this API. Well, in this case, we can virtualize this API um, and we can still do our testing. Kind of cool, huh? All right. So if there's any questions, please reach out to me. Um, again, this results is kind of relative just because I know um, it's going to be fine. Uh, again, it's a fake website. And again, we looked at a couple things. Again, this is the data for the fake. Uh, I call it fake, like mock fake. But the truth is it's our, our virtual API. Okay. Uh, this is our real API. Remember, it only has thir uh, 15 bits of data. Uh, the 30 popped in my mind because it's port 300. Uh, here it's point port 6801. If I look here, I can see that, oops, this has a timeout on us. But if I look here, this is my port 6801. And if I look into my web config file for that website, it's using the same port. So we're definitely using our service virtualization that was created. Uh, the other thing that I thought was a cool concept is I have 100 bits of data here versus 15 here. And both of those are synthetic data that were created by TDM. Okay. So if you have any questions, 
um, please reach out to me. And um, I hope this was useful. Thank you.